Hello, film fans. Welcome to the Film vs. Film podcast. My name is Martin Harries, your host. I'm a filmmaker on occasion, but mainly can't stop yapping about movies. On this podcast, every episode, I pick a topic from a film that's coming out at the cinema or on streaming. I pick a favorite film from that topic and battle it out against a guest to decide which film will become the greatest film of all time. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave us a five star review and subscribe. Please enjoy part one. Hello, Podaroonies or Podsters, if you prefer. As Borderlands, the new video game adaptation, is coming out at the cinema with the likes of Kate Blanchett, Kevin Hart, and Jamie Lee Curtis, of all people, are joining the cast of that film. We are talking, of course, video game adaptations to the sequel. Uh, of course, we have done an episode in the past that was... Sonic versus Resident Evil, the first one of those uh, two franchises. And of course, I can't be talking alone. Oh no, I am joined by one of my favorite and best loved decimal place haters, Matt from the Matt and Mark movie show. <laughs> How are you, sir? <laughs> hello, hello, Martin. Happy to represent uh, whole numbers, <laughs> prime numbers, any yeah. just a flat <laughs> number, decimal points, they can all go to hell right in the dumpster. <laughs> happy to live, live up to that yeah. reputation. You'll probably be happy to know you're not alone. <laughs> there are others out there. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. We should start a club. Call yes. me. Yeah. Cool. So tell us about your pod and where can we find you, sir? Yes, I am Matt. I'm from the Matt and Mark Movie Show. You can find us wherever you dig up your pods. Also, new for us, kind of semi-new, we're on YouTube now. Uh, we have a video version yeah. of our pods. So we've been pushing people there. So if you like what you see, please like it's up to us there. Uh, we are a movie podcast, no surprise. And we cover some new releases, some retro stuff. We have a more of a genre bent. So I'm actually very excited because... The couple times I've been on your show, Martin, we've talked yeah. about like really like legitimate adult movies, <laughs> yeah. not pornographic. I'm talking adults no. <laughs> like for grownups. That would be a very different show if we were talking uh, porno movies. Yeah, uh, that's, but that's here I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, that's next week. <laughs> I'm excited to talk to you about some good old fashioned crap. Yes. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the video game genre in movies is not great. I mean, I think it's really found its home in TV now, which is which is awesome with Far Cry and most notably for me, The Last of Us. I found The Last of Us TV show fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Did you uh, play that game or watch that TV show? So I, I'm ashamed to say I, I don't know the game. I know the game, but I haven't played yeah. it. And I know the sure. series, but I haven't seen it. My only okay. connection to Last of Us, I'm a big uh, Haunted House fan. I'm a big Haunter fan. And every year I go to a big haunted event here in the States called Halloween okay. Horror Nights. And they had a Last of Us house. And so I had the privilege mm. of going through that. So that was my only Last of Us experience. And I enjoyed it. So maybe awesome. I'll get around to the show at some point. Yeah, I mean, but certainly to the movie side of things in terms of adaptations of video games, it was not great. Uh, it was really <laughs> tough finding a good film. Uh, there are not many. I mean, yeah, there's really not many. They're either really badly made, really cheesy, with really bad effects, or they just go down the very commercial route and it's just a big advert and it doesn't really feel like a film Yeah, you know, done by committee. Mainly the anime stuff, <laughs> Super Mario Brothers, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, so it was it was interesting um, trying to sift through what's out there. Yeah, I think that mm. for a while, I do think obviously the video game adaptation subgenre has been rightfully kind of jeered and made fun of and mocked. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do think that there are some gems in there, particularly for mm. aficionados of schlock. I'm a big fan. I almost picked it <laughs> yeah. for this show. I'm a big right. fan of Paul Tom of Paul Paul Thomas Paul W S Anderson's Mortal Kombat from '95. Yeah, and um, I also have to tell you, I will go to bat for the original Mario Brothers movie, the one with Bob Hoskins. Yeah. I, I have a very <laughs> soft spot for it. It was really interesting when I put when I sent out the schedule to everyone, and I was like, oh, I've got quite a few horror episodes here. I'm like, oh, Matt's definitely going to pick one of the horror episodes. And then when you picked the video game adaptation one, I was like. 
why did he pick that one? And then I was like, <laughs> oh, he's going to go with the original Mario Brothers film. <laughs> of course he is. So I, it was interesting he didn't go for that. <laughs> I went back and forth, man. I was like, what am I going to bring to Martin? And I almost did, but I was like, <laughs> I have a hard time. Because that's the thing. I can acknowledge that I love those movies, but I can yeah. also acknowledge that they're just kind of bad movies. So I was like, <laughs> I have to come in with something that can legitimately carry itself on both fronts. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Borderlands then, what do you make of this one? Yeah, it's interesting to me because um, Eli Roth is making it. And I love, mm. as a horror fan, I'm like a horror devotee. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a yeah. big uh, Eli Roth fan. It's interesting to see him get an opportunity to do something, to play play with the big boys, play with some big studio money. I think that is, I'm, I'm in the minority because that is like my main interest in Borderlands. I don't really mm-hmm. know the game. I know of it. I know of it, its, its, its existence, but yeah. I'm not a fan or anything. From the trailer, I thought it looked a little bit like a Guardians of the Galaxy kind of clone a little bit. Yeah, same here. It definitely has that kind of vibe and they, you know, they use one of the tracks from one of the films as well in the trailer. So, yeah, uh, yeah, which is <laughs> they're definitely riding that train. Kind of a bizarre approach. That Guardians <laughs> train there for sure. But it's really interesting. They've got some really top actors like, you know, as I said, uh, Kate Blanchett and Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, yes. Yeah. So maybe cashing in. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Eli Roth is a really interesting director, you know, certainly in horror with Cabin Fever and things like that. Has a close relationship with Tarantino. You know, his knowledge of film history is is really good. I listened to him when he was on Tarantino's podcast, uh, the Video Archives podcast, and he seems like incredibly knowledgeable about horror yeah. and, and the slasher, like American Jallo type movies they were talking about on that particular episode and yeah he really knows his stuff so it's just really interesting kind of what he will bring to this film and how much leeway he will be allowed to put into the borderlands film yeah i'm like you i I don't i've never played the game particularly but i know of it it's kind of an rpg big online thing yeah a bit like Fortnite, i think yeah, yeah, very post-apocalyptic. It looks like mm. to me, it just looks like Mad Max Fortnite. It's just like yeah. <laughs> freako people who are like deformed shooting at each other. <laughs> yeah. That's what it looks like to me in the desert. <laughs> yeah, so it looks fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Will I see it at the cinema? Probably not, because Alien Romulus is around the corner as well, and I'm watching oh, that yeah. instead. It's not exactly a difficult choice. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. So it should, could be interesting, but I will probably wait for it to come up on netflix or something <laughs> to be honest <laughs> yeah i might wait unless unless my cinema does a uh, i'm part of a, a membership program where yeah. um i pay a certain amount a month like a subscription service and uh, i get a free ticket every month so maybe this will be a, a free ticket i might use my oh, okay. free ticket for this mm-hmm. fair enough <laughs> so shall we go with your pick first then matt sure yeah so what did you go with i chose from 2006 silent hill directed by Christoph Gans. Cool. Another Tarantino connection where Roger Avery wrote the adaptation for this movie, who yes. wrote Pulp Fiction with Tarantino. Yeah. Were there any other, other than Super Mario Brothers, were there any other <laughs> films in contention for you? The only other one was uh, the original Mortal Kombat. But again, yeah. that was one I was like going to have a hard time separating my nostalgia goggles and trying yeah. to approach it <laughs> on like a, on like an artistic level i feel like silent hill i think you know like we were saying i feel like over the years over the decades right there's always been mm. this constant cry of like video game movies suck yeah. and whenever i would hear that i would tell people you haven't seen silent hill mm. because to me for a while it was the apex of the video game adaptation subgenre just because yeah. I thought it worked not only as an adaptation of the game, but as a legitimate horror movie on its own. And I thought yeah. by default, it felt to me like the best video game movie ever made. Yeah, certainly at the time, I guess. So, I mean, had, had you played the game? Yeah, I played the original. I've played Silent Hill 1 and 2. Now, I know there have been many since then. Yeah. And I, I kind of lost my I kind of lost my taste for it. But those original mm-hmm. games are a real treat. 
And yeah. this this <laughs> captures the spirit of those games. It does deviate, you know, as these adaptations do. Mm. But man, if you're familiar, especially with that first Silent Hill, this feels like it's right there. Yeah, I mean, I tried playing the first Silent Hill. I was certainly too young to, to play it. <laughs> I had quite a high tolerance of of horror of horror in like movies and stuff. But when it came to games, it was just too real. You, the fact that you're controlling the main character. Oh like, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> <laughs> and when you die too many times, it's just. Oh, and when you get stuck, it's like oh, I give up now. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 We used to have sleepovers and dare each other to play Silent Hill. We were like, come on. If you, if you were a new kid at the sleepover, we'd be like, you're playing it, you first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even at university when I played like a, a game called Amnesia, that was kind of a not a big popular game, but that was that was too much even for me then. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. There's one that really that really just curls my my spine and my toes. It's called Outlast. I don't know if you've heard of that right. one. No. Holy god, I mean, you can't. I'm saying this as a grown ass man right now. Like I don't know if I could get through 15 <laughs> minutes of that game. It's hard enough. Just this the just the opening load screen is hard. Yeah, so now I'm currently torturing myself playing the VR version of the Walking Dead game. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's quite yeah, I mean, my soul has left my body a few times in that. Um, when <laughs> when you have no weapon, you're like, holy shit, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, yeah, experiencing VR horror games is quite something. <laughs> yeah. And remembering not to run using your actual legs. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Don't run face first into the wall. <laughs> no. <laughs> um so what happens in silent hill sir so in silent hill um we kind of have two uh concurrent storylines happening but the, the 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 gist of it is this yeah a little girl named sharon is having very bad dreams and when she dreams she mentions a place called silent hill her parents want to help her they disagree on how to do this the dad wants more traditional therapy that kind of thing the mom thinks it's a great idea to take the daughter apparently silent hill is a real place it's a city yeah. or a small 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 town like a ghost town in west virginia and she wants to take her there to see if maybe that helps unlock some memories of course we know that this is a bad idea and the minute they get to silent hill silent hill is not simply a ghost town it could possibly be a gateway to hell we have to survive <laughs> and hopefully get out and and get home safe yeah so initial reactions for me for silent hill yeah i found it really interesting i wouldn't say i loved it this is a first time watch for me there's some really amazing imagery here and they really go for it yeah that french director man my god he he likes to <laughs> literally throw shit at the wall and there's one particular <laughs> character that i loved especially his design <laughs> and i'm like yeah that's that guy's cool but the end was really interesting and i have kind of mixed feelings on it maybe i need to watch it again but i did feel kind of dissatisfied but we will get into it what's your initial reactions to silent hill yeah i i saw this i've watched this movie now maybe five times over the years i saw it when it okay. originally came out in 2006 on its initial run because i'm an old man i have liked it every time my yeah appreciation for it only grows it's a movie that has had it's had to grow on me and it's grown so by now even rewatching right. it refamiliarizing myself with it for this show i sort of fell back in love with it i think to me initial takeaway it's kind of got everything i love in a horror movie we've mm. got grotesque imagery we've got <laughs> dread we've got tone this thing really knows how to play with tone and it's got an interesting story and the way that that mystery box i think mystery box stuff is so easy to fuck up now because it's such a shorthand mm. and i think this movie knows how to unfold a mystery in a super at least for me satisfying way i will say i, I i'm with you on the ending because i mean we'll talk about it a little bit uh, a little bit more later but i always think that the ending that they don't sort of re resolve this one question until the very end and i was kind of mm. surprised in my rewatch to be like oh no they're they're actually playing their cards very early and letting you know that this yeah. is the direction they're headed with. I'm <laughs> yeah. speaking cryptically because I don't want to give anything away. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a pleasing, I think to me, if you're in it for the mystery, 
you're happy. If you're in it for the horror, you're happy. And if you're in it for the uh, strictly surface level video game stuff, you're happy. So directing then, I quite liked how you're just kind of dropped into this situation where this mother character, Rose, played by Rada Mitchell, is looking for her daughter who runs away from home. You know, I did find it a little funny, though, that within a few seconds, she goes from the house to a massive waterfall, which is like right next to a road. But sure, <laughs> the magic of editing, I guess. Um, there's some nice like flowing camera to show how, you know, tall this waterfall is. But I loved how, as you think the child is going to fall down the waterfall, you get this like shot pointed down the waterfall and it dissolves into this kind of fiery like industrial complex. And we go right into like the child's face, this child face that's at the bottom, uh, but with like a, you know, a zombie grin on a face and you clearly kind of recognize that it's a dream. So that was pretty cool. And I thought it was a little short, though, that opening sequence. But I would have, yeah, liked a little bit more. But yeah, that's it was a pretty promising start for me. Yeah, and that's and that's the magic of Christoph Gans. I don't know if you're familiar with his other work, but no. he made a great movie called Brotherhood of the Wolf. If you want to talk okay. about flowing cameras and like really <laughs> smooth, steady cams, definitely watch Brotherhood of the Wolf. It's like a okay. martial arts werewolf movie. Oh, wow. uh, that's okay. set in like okay. in like you know the French society days. <laughs> uh, it's really crazy, awesome film. But yes, I I love the way that directorially silent hill unfolds especially the first half hour because it really feels like one specific type of american movie it's like okay it's like it's very specifically like a ghost story but yeah he's holding his like hellscape cards for later and he's teasing it a bit so it i love the sort of genteelness because once you're mm. in silent hill the movie sort of really starts to throw a lot at you both yeah. visually and story-wise, the first half hour feels really gentle to me. Mm. I love the flowing camera moves. I love the teases. You also have that yeah. wonderful lone piano score with that that kind of those same keys, mm. that little melody kind of gets stuck in my head, and it almost kind of lulls you in, wants you to come to Silent Hill. So I really like how Christoph Gans gently eases you in. Yeah, certainly the pacing in the first that first hour is is really is really great, I think. I think it kind of does slow down a little bit a few bumps in the middle when we get to the church but on the whole i i quite liked yeah as you say that that gradual build up of atmosphere yeah like i mean the whole design of the fact that they do the ash kind of rain mist type thing that you get in the game like really that really comes across really well in the in the movie for sure yes they and they play it as a fun reveal too because if this is yeah. your first time seeing silent hill you're thinking like, oh, it's snow. And there's just mm. I, that, again, I think is a, a strength to have an international director do an American story like this because he's not relying on language or two characters saying, hey, look, it's snowing. Like he literally has to do it visually. She mm. finds the snow. She wipes it on her finger. We see the smudge. And now we understand it's ash. Yeah. And yeah, then was... we're, we're putting that together with the information he's given us before that like Silent Hill has a reputation not just for being a ghost town, but for being a mining town where there's a, f a constantly burning coal yeah. fire underneath the town, <laughs> which is fucking bananas. <laughs> yeah. And it just, it clues you in because the yeah. minute that smudge happens, you're like, oh my God, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. We won't talk about the logistics of how that works. We're <laughs> yeah. just going to go with it. <laughs> Video game movie. Video game yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh the first like a horror sequence i'm not sure they get quite right but i still kind of enjoyed it where rose is kind of walking through this town of silent hill looking for her daughter and as we said it's covered in ash and it, it's still raining ash as well and you get the sense that d the director is kind of trying too hard and you feel the direction a little bit with the flowing cameras there's a simple shot where like rose is just walking across the street and there's like a chair in the foreground and a hole in it and christoph can the director must have been like oh it would be really cool if we push into the hole in the chair <laughs> as we as rose walks, walks across the street this is art so that was a bit try hard for me but uh, it you know, it feels like they're really stretching it before something happens. Like when she walks down the steps and puts 
puts her cigarette lighter on and she accidentally just bumps into a load of bins. And I did find that a bit funny. But when she sees this like ghostly figure that looks like her daughter, she runs after her through these fences. And we see this dude that just, that is kind of, you assume is dead, but is alive and sort of melded and squished it together with the fence, which looks great. And the reveal kind of springs up springs up on you from nowhere which was great for me then we get like (laughs) the cgi gray charcoal kids uh with like fire emitting off them who weren't particularly scary but you know they had a a bit of creepiness to them but nothing more than that but when she kind of knocks herself out and wakes up we hear johnny cash the ring of fire (laughs) which certainly made me laugh out loud uh, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a good touch. Like the, it's it shows me again that Christoph Gans isn't taking it as seriously as you think. Like, yeah. I'll give you that chair shot that does feel a little try hard. Yeah, but when you have moments of him deliberately being like, "I'm gonna play Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire," <laughs> it tell it's him telling you he's in on it. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's going all in for sure. I'm going to make the best horror film I can. But I also love too. Again, you know, this is him doing the, you know, adapting the source material, right? In Silent Hill, in the game, your character is having to light their way through with a lighter, right? Mm. So, of course, that's got to be in the movie. But I honestly think, to me, better even than that is this repetition that Gans establishes with the with the alarm that goes off. Yes. Because yeah, then good. we're waiting. So every time we hear an alarm, it's one of those kind of things, right? Mm. We know that the the land sort of shifts and uh, Silent Hill goes through a demonic transformation where it's it's gross inhabitants kind of come out to play. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that kind of is on a timer. So you don't you you can certainly try to defeat them and shoot your way out or whatever you're going to do. But even if you if your only defense is just like, oh, shit, I'm going to hide in this disgusting bathroom. If you hide long (laughs) enough, you can outlast the the events because then they'll just sort of dissipate into nothing. And you've got X amount of time before the alarm goes off. But I love that that repetition because Mm. you're at least for me, I'm dreading it. I'm dreading it because now I know every time I hear that that stupid alarm, that bad shit is going to happen. And it's yeah. a great little device. It's a great device that that Gons can keep kind of coming back to to put you on your toes. You get a little mm. comfortable. Oh, maybe they're safe or we found weapons we can use or an ally. The, we yeah. know that alarm is coming. And I just I just love that. Yeah, I, I love the creativity as well. Uh, every time that goes off, like the horror is always very different you know to really kind of gross out stuff a little dated cgi but i don't mind that it's of its time and you know i love the fact that they're really going for it especially there's a big you know wide shot of of the kind of the bent dude that's kind of tied up with barbed wire coming out of the toilet <laughs> yeah. and yeah it's just he's like the guy that came out of a blood. tool video <laughs> yeah literally blood and bile everywhere and it's just like holy (laughs) shit (laughs) what are they gonna do next Um, yeah yeah, so i love the fact that it it feels very different every time it goes off yeah absolutely i also think the types or the the styles of at least character design the styles of horror are different sometimes Mm. it's a little clive barker hellraiser ish yeah sometimes you know it feels a little more resident evil where we've got sort of straightforward maybe zombies but then we get really creative later and again i have to give credit to to christoph Mm. gans and his team where we get the nurses who are arguably to me even up there with Triangle Head or Pyramid Head, I think it's his yeah. name. Um, <laughs> I would put the nurses as the icons of of this movie. Yeah, yeah. I think there's only like one shot, is there? When you see her, her eyes bleeding. Is that right? Yes, sure. yes. Yeah. But no, no. Uh, uh, the the army of nurses that she's got to walk through. Those like twisty face nurses that sort oh, of are mannequins yes. who kind yes, of activate. I oh. Yeah, that's great. Those to me have become the icons of of Silent Hill, especially too. Mm. If you're in, in the horror community, you know, uh, you've walked around at conventions and the cosplays you've seen. Maybe you've seen one Pyramid Head. Yeah, you've seen a <laughs> lot of Silent Hill nurses for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, it's very similar to those haunted uh, house things where you have to walk through. 
you know, yes. in these hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. And it's a great sequence. It's effective. The scares are played mm. organically. There's no bullshit. Yeah. That that's the other thing I love with this movie and and the design of the scares as a horror film. Mm-hmm. The scares are all organic. Nothing is faked. There's no fucking black cat like to, to freak to yeah. scare you as <laughs> like a oh, we just had to throw something in. No fake stuff, yeah. Yeah, no fake stuff. The scares happen organically in the scene. So when you're walking through with those nurses, it's it's mm. realized visually really purely because it, it yeah. puts you right in her shoes. It it feels great. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's definitely been a, quite a few horror films that have done that since. And I don't think they've pr- frankly done it better than this. Like, this yeah. is really well done. I guess a little short, but I, I the one thing I did love was was the fact that when, you know, when she does, when Rose does accidentally touch them or brush them, they feel dangerous, like proper dangerous, and they're not like they're they're swinging away, and they literally catch <laughs> some of the other nurses, like literally killing them, yeah. you know, slitting their throats. And I was like, "Whoa, holy shit!" You know, and it, it definitely <laughs> yeah. borders that line of kind of being really shocking and scary and funny at the same time. Oh, a hundred percent, because they're literally killing each other, which which is a great line to to keep on. Yeah, it's it's horrifying, it's scary, it's grotesque, but then all of the nurses have great boobs. <laughs> They all have amazing <laughs> cleavage. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a, de- like, it's a decision I appreciate. Okay? <laughs> yeah. But it's also fucking ridiculous that they all yeah. they're all like Baywatch models. They all yeah. they all have <laughs> giant cleavage. But I'm like, every nurse has great cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> and really, we only cast yeah. perfectly cleavage nurses for this scene. Christoph Gann must be like. <laughs> got advice from Paul Verhoeven. Uh, what, what do you reckon I should do to uh, improve this scene? <laughs> I know what you should do. More boobs. <laughs> yeah. Add yeah. boobs. Yeah. <laughs> boobies, please. Yes. <laughs> Dude, that's uh, the French man, Christophe Gans. Yeah. You know, those French guys, man. They want more boobs in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> in any genre. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. The last scenes uh, in the church was pretty cool i thought like seeing laurie holden burn was fucking wild so i was like yeah. when you start to see like the heat waves appear and you're like oh she's gonna get saved in a minute you know this is going on too long she's gonna get saved no the the effects are coming she's burning oh oh she's dead what the fuck um <laughs> and it is gross no one's gonna save her yeah that is really gnarly yeah it's bad and i love the whole like barbed wire craziness in the last scene too where like the bulb queen <laughs> gets torn apart like the, the, the you know the the barbed wire goes up her dress and tears her apart like in two that was gnarly but but it kind of ended weird for me where i think it was like Alyssa um just sort of looks at sharon and everything kind of disappears which felt a bit a bit anticlimactic but i feel like they could have maybe thought about a different way of trying to work out how to stop this situation in the end but yeah my i i I think that moment is left open to interpretation i agree with you but Mm. uh but there is a part of me and i don't know if i'm if I'm doing work for the movie that I don't need to be doing, but there's a part yeah. of me that thinks Alessa, the ghost girl in that moment is transferring herself into Sharon. Yeah. And that's why everything sort of goes away because then the next time we see Sharon, not that Sharon is like some normal kid who's bouncy and nice. Sharon's <laughs> yeah. fucking weird from the minute we meet her, <laughs> right? She has repressed <laughs> memories. She's got real mental issues, but like, at the end, Sharon does not speak and is acting very weird. And I'm like, is it because you've gone through, understandably, a hellish experience? <laughs> yeah. Or because there's a little ghost girl that took over your body? <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, like, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Can we let the cat out of the bag about Sean Bean and, and his side of the story yet? Can we spoil yeah. this? Oh, yeah. He doesn't die. <laughs> What's yes. going on? <laughs> the first Sean Bean. This is like the anti-Sean Bean movie. They're like... Yeah. You were going to live, dude. In fact, everyone else in the movie is going to die except you. <laughs> yeah. It's like a first ever for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I found that hilarious when, yeah, at the end, you, you realize that he, well, he is alive and and Rose and Sharon are not. Um, that's how I saw it. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely right. But here's mm. the thing. I always thought, oh, like in a, in a Shyamalan-esque twist, we don't. <laughs> see those moments until five seconds before the crowd oh my god they've been dead this whole time no yeah. actually the movie 
Mm. I forget this. The movie kind of shows you that it plays its hand midway through where Mm. Sean Bean on his own has gone to Silent Hill. He's speaking with police. He's trying to find his wife and his daughter. And as he's wandering the town, we're seeing we're intercutting Mm. uh, Rada Mitchell exploring Silent Hill. So we understand, oh, they're in the same place at the same exact time. He even acknowledges when you cut back to Sean Bean, there are moments where he's like, he thinks he heard a door shut or he felt something. Mm. And it's very clear, like, oh, his his wife is dead. I always yeah. forget this. I was like, why wouldn't you save it for this Shyamalan yeah. gotcha <laughs> moment at the end? You know? Yeah. I kind of, I, at that point, I was getting, kind of getting quite excited about the film. And I didn't find it that obvious for me personally that. I thought I was giving the film more credit than it deserves, I think, whereas I think it was being really clever. But yeah, I'll get into that with screenplay. But yeah, that's that was a really great moment. And I think a missed opportunity for me. But I think my favorite shots or scenes was anything with the big triangle hat man. Um, I love that (laughs) dude. (laughs) Yes, I believe his name is Pyramid Head. Okay. (laughs) A big triangle hat man is better though surely um, yeah I, I, I like that better i like yeah. that better. i mean the scene when they're all kind of running for shelter after the, the alarm goes off for like the second or third time r- running into the church and the and the big triangle hat man is is chasing them and, and gets one of the church people and literally like he grabs her and literally tears the skin off her <laughs> skeleton yeah. i was like whoa that is awesome <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I also like that Pyramid Head. So Pyramid Head's pyramid that he wears yeah. on his head yeah. uh, <laughs> is very heavy and very pointy. You would think yes. this would be the character's predominant attack. No. Yeah. <laughs> pyramid Head is also carrying a giant like anime sword that is like yeah. a ton. It's it's huge. Mm. It's comically large. And he uses that to cut through iron doors to yeah. attempt to stab you. That was a cool sequence. Mm. His pyramid head is just ornamental. It's just a hat. It's just for yeah. fashion. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, I loved his giant knife. It was definitely felt like it was out of a you know a Final Fantasy game as well. In that yes, <laughs> that that to me is where this movie feels the most video gamey. Like if oh, I had yeah. to mm. isolate something, I'd be like Pyramid Head, that guy yeah. with the giant sword. It's a video game movie. Yeah, I love that sequence as well when all the kind of the giant beetle slash rats are coming down the side. And it's not a particularly dramatic, like suspenseful scene. He just turns up in the background with all his his beetle thingies. <laughs> He's like, come on, guys, let's go. Time for your walk. <laughs> and then he kind of twigs Rose and they have that kind of great sequence behind the door, like tries to stab her. That that's yes, like, very great scene. Action y. Probably my favorite action sequence in the film for sure yeah yeah it's a it's a solid i would so i would say that and the nurses are yeah. my two favorite sequences where where she's rada mitchell has to go through those nurses but the the pyramid head door scene is at an all-timer and one interesting thing so i actually own this on blu-ray so i was okay. getting to explore some of the features and while the majority of those beetles rat things are cg the beetles that break into the room are actually practical so when oh, Lori wow. golden yeah. smashes that one on the floor that's real. Like oh, cool. they really goosed something with a squib for it to explode when she stomped on it. And it is a reason it looks so good. Yeah, that was a great moment. So favorite scene for you? What are you going for? Oh, man, it's tough. I, I mean, I'm going to give it to the nurses. I yeah. feel like as a horror fan, if I don't give it to the nurses, I'm, I'm lying. Um, <laughs> to me, it feels just so effective on every level design scares Mm. atmosphere it's also just a great setup Mm. for for that you know like she's got to crawl through these nurses who are all frozen and they're attracted to light meaning the minute you know she has to use her light to see they're gonna wake up but if she turns the light off she can't see and Mm. uh, as we said before she's kind of gently navigating them and they're they're sensing her or smelling her or something and yeah. they start to attack and they wind up being able to attack each other their design is cool it feels iconic i'm mm. gonna give it to the nurses yeah and boobs too and uh, the but... boobs listen for my <laughs> french film fans <laughs> the boobs yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh it just came to me i was just trying to rack my brain what other films that reminded me that did kind of the same similar scene and we did a film last year uh heist movies and the guy picked army of no 
Army of the Dead. Oh, and, yes. And yeah, that's the worst version of that scene. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> bad. That's how you don't do that scene. <laughs> yes. Also, not enough boobs. No, yeah. As we've learned. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Come on, Zach. <laughs> Get with the program. God. <laughs> that's how you do the scene. Watch Silent Hill. <laughs> I want to be aroused and scared <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> directing score for me then oh this is tough i think you know christoph gan does a pretty decent job to be honest i think yeah i think there's there is a little of pretense somewhere uh some uh, sometimes and you know i feel i feel like i i loved you know the, the slow build up and i always love a slow build up but sometimes i think the pacing of some scenes was a little too long but i think when it does get going especially in that that first proper horror sequence when the alarm goes off yeah that that's pretty great i love that and yeah they really go for it in the end as well so from a directional point of view i think he does a a stand-up job so i think i'll go like like a 7.8 for me yeah i am I agree with everything that that you said. I love what Christoph Gantz is doing in the movie. I do think, as you said, I do think sometimes he sort of gets a a little indulgent, hint with the nurses, but also (laughs) he gets indulgent. There is a little bit of pacing kind of as we're meeting the cult with uh, the board queen and everything. It does kind of kind of slow you down. And that that is also on Christoph Gantz. So I'm I love Christoph Gantz here, but I hate Mm. decimals. So I'm going (laughs) to go eight. A a firm eight for me. Yeah. For directing. Uh, Screenplay then. Uh, So as you're watching this, when all of, you know, the weird and wonderful things like start happening with the fire kids and the no arms dude who has acid for blood. uh, And when the cop is trying to get out of there, like the room, the the road is just gone. Uh, So you start to think, yeah, this can't be just like a ghost town, you know, that burned all these inhabitants to death. Like you feel like Silent Hill is kind of messing with their minds. You know, it's not just a simple haunted house story, surely. And of course, the film gets really creative with that during the elementary school scene where the pacing of that is is good. Like the creativity on show is really good in terms of imagery and not necessarily you know directional effects but i loved like the barbed wire dude that we've talked about a little bit already that that sort of infects the hallways with disease and essentially you know essentially diseases the walls and you get like a big wide shot of the whole room filled with blood and guts and bile bubbling away very full on and also sean bean is in this film uh as (laughs) rose's husband (laughs) And and they soon kind of reveal that they are essentially in the same room, as you said, Matt, but you can't see, they can't see or hear each other. So I was thinking, oh, this could be something very cool. Like, is Rose kind of stuck in some sort of parallel universe or dimension? Yeah, that's where I'm saying, yeah, am I giving this film too much credit? <laughs> so I was like, this could be really fun and really cool com- concept to play with. So I was excited for that at that point in the film, that it's not just like a haunted house type movie, but no, yeah, it is just a, you know, a haunted house type film. (laughs) Um, So I feel like they kind of missed a trick there. And I feel, I think one of the big problems is that they, they don't keep, for me, they don't keep Sean Bean at Silent Hill. And I feel like they could have gone down the route of really playing with that and, and giving, frankly, giving sean bean more things to do because he's frankly not in this film much at all and he's acting his little socks off bless him and with little scenes that he's got so i would have kind of liked that that it maybe was that they're kind of stuck in like a different i know it would have probably deviated a lot from the game i get that but yeah i would have liked it if they were stuck in some sort of different reality or dimension and then they kind of have to work together there's they work out some sort of communication to try and get rose out of it and they are you know alive still that's where my brain was going i was like oh this is this sounds awesome Uh Uh, (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean i i get that i mean um i think if we're talking screenplay well done martin (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I think, I think like, you know, th- th- that is a cool idea, right? Yeah. To have him essentially able to kind of in a Stranger Things way realize, yeah. oh, I can help the people on the other side yeah. if I do this. Kind of like moving chess pieces. Well, the person yeah. in reality does this to help the people in the fucked up dimension. Yeah, and now yeah. they've got access to this thing. That would be cool. Unfortunately, that's not what we're given. Uh, but you know what? Yeah. I didn't. I think hearing your idea is cool, but I didn't miss it or I didn't want for something else while I was watching. I like, I think script wise, Roger Avery, he's no slouch. He's a fucking amazing writer. Um, Ironically, one thing I think that Roger Avery does incredibly well as evidenced in Pulp Fiction and another great movie called Mm. Rules of Attraction that he's written and he's killing Zoe. He's a master of dialogue, but the dialogue in Silent Hill is very straightforward. I can yeah. begin to tell you one memorable line. It's where yeah. I have, and I have to be fair and, a, and yeah. objective as 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 I can. I do think the dialogue in the movie leaves something to be desired, yes. but it's dreadful. That's, it's let's dreadful. be honest. <laughs> it, it is dreadful when you get moments like like you know the little girls writhing on the ground. And she's like Silent Hill, Silent Hill. I'm like there was a, <laughs> there wasn't a more <laughs> there wasn't an easier way to approach that. <laughs> We yeah. just have to have her blurt it out. Um, yeah, yeah. I I think though that stuff is silly, and I and I have to consider that when considering my score. But yeah. character wise, motivation wise, mystery wise, in terms of the storytelling, I do think the script is strong in those aspects. Mm-hmm. I do think it does strike a nice balance, helping you kind of without having to spell it out too much, helping yeah. you understand the world of silent hill and the world of our reality are different and i'm also a sucker for cult films like films yeah. with cults in them uh and this has got <laughs> yeah. a real crazy cult in it oh, and yeah. i love sort of their uh you know we're sort of used to religious zealotry in our in our movie cults but these mm. people take it to another fucking <laughs> another <Yeah>. place <laughs> yeah. i do love to you know playing with the more i guess cosmic what the fuck aspects of silent mm. hill like yeah. Having Alessa have barbed wire powers, you know, she kind of turns <laughs> yeah. into like she turns into like a like a Clive Barker Captain Marvel in a way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like that stuff to me is awesome and mm. shows again in a from a writing standpoint the ability to juggle the crazy sort of video game like aspects mm. and put them in an accessible format. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think I think the script does that. Again. The only thing I'm going to have to mark down is the dialogue, which I do yeah, think is pretty okay. bad. I think for the the problem with for me is that yeah, Sean Bean just feels a little bit wasted in the film. Yes, he is kind of pivotal in kind of figuring out the truth behind the daughter character, but yeah, I feel like he should have been more involved. You know, with that scene where he does turn up at Silent Hill, you know, it, it's for sure it put me it took me down a very different path. But I, in thinking about it, I'm like, do we need that scene, like for that reveal at the end to work? And I think it still could have worked, because you know the way you work it out is through the cinematography. It's it's because both scenes look very different, and I th- feel like they could have just done that throughout the whole film. Have Sean mm-hmm. in it a lot more, give him more meaty scenes, but have you know that very specific cinematography for his scenes and for. Rose and Sharon scenes in Silent Hill. So, yeah, I think I don't think they needed that scene with Sean, like, and Rose in the same place at the same time necessarily. I see what you mean. Uh, to me, the, where I really think you can see that that is again sort of a it's kind of a failed experiment in a way is at the very end when mm. you kind of the sun is out. You go into Sean Bean's house. He's like sleeping on a couch, right? Yeah. <laughs> but then Sharon and Rose wander in and. There's no, I wanted at least some more kind of acknowledgement, kind of like yeah. earlier when Kristoff shows us, oh, he sort of sensed her as they walk by because they're framed exactly the same way. You have these mm. like super wide shots. He he crosses frame in the same way that Rose does. And of yeah. course, all we're seeing differently is the color palette. The color timing is different to show you reality mm. looks like this. Silent Hill looks like this. That was effective. Yeah. But like at the end, there really isn't enough acknowledgement. I agree. I, I do think maybe then it, it is sort of a failed experiment in that way. And more Sean Bean is always a good thing, man. I'm oh, always yeah. down for more Sean Bean, for yeah. sure. Yeah, because I think looking back, I felt like that maybe Rose and Sharon got killed in the car accident when they got to Silent Hill, maybe. Yeah. And Sybil, the cop, Laurie Holden, got killed in the bike accident. Because obviously she's at Silent Hill as well. So, 
but then they they really kind of brush over the fact that they they're literally just walking past her bike <laughs> you know and you don't see that scene yes and also and also um Ro- uh, sharon's car right yeah the, the jeep is also then presumably just in the middle of the road somewhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they do conveniently leave that out <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the only other thing I would like to mention with screenplay is when we get to the church scene, it's like the Adams family meets the mist for me. And the, you know, the pacing definitely slows down a little bit. But when Rose confronts the big bad demon, like you get a big like info backstory dump, which felt a little disappointing as it felt, you know, long and not not a big surprise with the reveals. But what was kind of surprising uh, was that the dark half of Alessa sort of absorbs into Rose and kind of uses her as a vessel to take down the real villain of the film, Christabella. Yes, a, a tad cliched that you you know that you think the real vil- villain of the film isn't actually the villain villain at the end, but when you kind of cast the ball queen, <laughs> you kind of oh, can yeah. see that coming as well. But I still kind of really enjoyed that reveal. Yeah, same. Also, uh, Alice Krieg, the actress who who plays Christabella, is I mean she's awesome. You know, oh yeah, but yeah, I feel like that so lady cool. is a dead giveaway. If she's a dead yeah. movie, she's bad, <laughs> yeah. right? She's not here to play someone nice. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? That's where stunt casting kind of bites back. Like it, yeah. you're like, yeah, that sort of gives our our position away immediately. Yeah, my favorite Star Trek film. That's first contact. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, favorite lines, uh, interesting lines. Um, <laughs> I mean, I picked them because they were bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> one kind of near the start where I think uh, Sean Bean is talking to one of the detectives and the de- detective says, these people were good people, most of them. Some, you might say, deserved it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I said, I don't have quotes yeah. for the movie because I actually think the dialogue is bad. I, yeah. I will just go, <laughs> to ta- I will just come out and say, yeah. I think the dialogue leaves something to be desired. Again, yeah. very weird that Roger Avery wouldn't have done a pass to give us mm. sort of to punch these lines a little harder, kind of give them a, another look. I yeah. did, The one thing I can think of that bothers me every fucking time I see it is the minute we're introduced to Sharon is she's just going silent Hill, silent Hill. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> we get it. Uh, I always remember that. <laughs> yeah. And I do love, and I think it's maybe more about her look and her performance. I love Lori Holden in this. I oh, love, yeah. love the design of that character. Yeah. I think it's such a cool, again, think about this, man. You know, this is 2006. This is a pretty progressive movie when you think about it. We weren't mm-hmm. getting movies that had like an all female cast yeah. for your mm-hmm. horror video game movie. So I got to give it some cred there. But Absolutely. out of a movie that does that, I was so impressed by Lori Holden because it's so crazy that she's a female motorcycle cop. Yeah. She's not played. It's not, you know, I think immediately if this movie were made today, it would be like we would have to play some other aspect like, oh, she's, you know, maybe she's LGBTQ yeah. or maybe, you know, whatever. Like they don't have to go there. No, They're like, no. who gives a crap? She's just a badass motorcycle cop with a badass haircut. She mm-hmm. looked like she walked out of like a James Cameron movie yeah. and she sells it. Like yeah. she's tough as nails. I love that moment where they're running up to the uh, running up the stairs to the church, mm. and the yeah. sky is darkening and the alarms are going off. And she's like, "We gotta get inside." That to me feels. If we have to talk about dialogue, I'm gonna give the dialogue points yeah. to Lori Holden because she sells it with her performance. Yeah, I cannot remember a single line that Rada Mitchell said. <laughs> I I cannot <laughs> I remember. <do>. A single... <laughs> yeah, oh, do... yeah. I like. I literally the lines of this movie. Like I just. That was one thing I kept thinking. I was like, Martin is going to ding me on these lines because the dialogue (laughs) is awful. Yeah. So my favorite line, because it was just like, did she really just say that? So halfway through the film, I think she comes out of, you know, the big horror set piece with the diseased walls everywhere and the barbed wire dude. (laughs) And she comes out and she says, they used to say this place was haunted. I think they were right. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, you're saying this now? (laughs) Really? (laughs) Okay, that's a good line. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So screenplay score for me. Yeah. (laughs) I think this film 
has like really great potential uh, you know i don't know the game storyline that well but i feel like they could have really did something really special with you know what they do with you know stranger things and kind of they could have predated stranger things with that type of thing and with the parallel universe stuff and and not make it just a typical haunted house film yes the dialogue is really bad yeah so i'll go but as you say like the fact that it's pretty much you know you've got three female leads here which is amazing like the you know the male characters are very big bit part characters but i would have liked to have seen more sean bean very wasted character for me so i'll go like a 6.3 for me yeah again i think um i think i have to ding it for the for the for the dialogue for sure i think i'm almost in lockstep with you i'm gonna just go for a flat six yeah i think the i think the strength is the concept and the storytelling i think Mm. the the weakness is the dialogue and some of the logic doesn't check out from a story (laughs) standpoint especially again as we're talking about the connection between worlds or or dimensions Mm. yeah so acting then sean bean is doing his best (laughs) with his terrible american accent yes i'm not an american but i've seen enough films and tv to recognize the accent's not very good john sorry um (laughs) but he you know he's severely underused for me but when he is on screen you can definitely feel like he's really trying to bring out as much emotion as possible with the few scenes he has i feel like there are a few scenes that are definitely cut out that he did you know that's left on the cutting room floor bless him so i want i want more sean (laughs) yeah i think sean is great given what he's given and as an american i can tell you he sounds like sean bean but that's fine we just (laughs) love sean bean over here we'll take it but I think the three performances in this movie, Rada Mitchell, especially Lori Holden and oh. Alice Krieg, these are mm. all fantastic performances in my opinion. Rada Mitchell does it physically. You know, mm. she doesn't have a lot to say, but you're it's a lot of face acting for her part, and then she pulls it off, man. She sells the reality of her mm. situation, I think. She proves herself to be a good final girl, right? If we're talking yeah. in horror movie yeah. terms. But man, Lori Holden is such a badass character. I love her line delivery. I love the confidence. And Alice Krieg just deliciously sort of devours up that, oh, chews yeah. that scenery, man. Absolutely. Like she's at a fucking lobster restaurant. <laughs> she's just chewing it all. Yeah. Uh, she does a fantastic job. So yeah. I do think the performances are great. And also I got to shout out the whoever played Pyramid Head. Oh, great yeah. fucking job because you you, you made me believe a man with a pyramid head <laughs> yeah. is real. And, uh, and I have to give you points yeah. for that. I hope that actor got to take that hat home with him. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I do wonder. I've never seen the. Uh, I've never seen the sequel. I know there's a sequel with Jon mm. Snow. I've okay. never seen it. No, but I'm... I do wonder if Pyramid Head factors into that sequel at all, and if they yeah. called that guy up, if they were like, yeah. "Hey, man, what have you been doing since 2006? <laughs> yeah, we need you back on set." Yeah, and that guy was like, <laughs> wherever yeah. he was. Yeah. yeah. Where's that hat? <laughs> it's here yeah, somewhere. Exactly. It's big enough. <laughs> yeah. He goes to the hat rack. There's like, yeah. there's a fedora. There's a snow cap. And then <laughs> yeah. there's a giant pyramid head. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Clunk. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all I want to see in the sequel is just pyramid, pyramid man. Just go into a hat shop and just see if there's a bigger one. They get on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or maybe he tries to get into the store and he can't fit through the doorway. Yeah. It's like, clunk. <laughs> Clunk. Yeah. yeah it's like come on christoph i want to kill some dudes with this hat this time it's got to be bigger yeah put a hat store uh, in the movie <laughs> yeah there was got to be a haberdashery in silent yeah. hill right for yeah. sure yeah for sure yeah alice krieg krieg is it creed i think it's alice krieg krieg yeah she is amazing and she really doesn't have to do much with her acting to really give that creep fa- factor and give real evil eyes in her performance. She's, she's really great. I love that scene when they are showing Rose to, you know, the, the dark place in this hotel, uh, in this hotel room. And then she <laughs> randomly like, Oh yeah, you left this locket. And, and then she's like, Oh shit, witch, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was, that was kind of funny, but awesome at the same time. <laughs> but she didn't yeah. think to open up the locket. But yeah, 
<laughs> that was good too. I also loved her explanation. Like, sorry, a life of scavenging, right? Like old habits. I couldn't help myself. I had to. I had to pick your pocket. Yeah, <laughs> and she kind of does that business like really well. I also love the stunt casting in terms of like actor looks mm. uh, for the other cult members. There are some oh, yeah. great looking people, like just day players. They don't have mm. lines, but there's like a big guy with like long black wispy hair. Like they yeah. really cast the cult well. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, or they just you know borrowed some actors from the uh, Adams Family movies. Maybe. <laughs> yeah <laughs> some leftovers from yeah. all those <laughs> adams family films yeah. yeah uh yeah i'm a big fan of laurie cohen i loved her in the walking dead definitely killed yeah. off too early for me in that show spoilers sorry um, and also in another movie you called out the mist oh, she's yeah, a yeah. she's a member of that frank darabont company she was in the majestic the mist she's fantastic in both films mm-hmm. and i think to me this might be my favorite thing she's ever done yeah possibly yeah you know, I quite like the fact that she's basically in kind of T-1000 mode <laughs> at yes. the start of, of the film with the, you know, the cop helmet. She cuts a striking figure yeah. when she's like got the helmet on and she's like marching. <laughs> like, yeah. it's intimidating. It is. Yeah. And for me, I've she was definitely the best actress in the movie. And I felt like she was definitely the one that was portraying that she was in an awful situation compared to, sorry, uh, Rita Mitchell as Rose. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of hers. I'm sorry. Like she was a bit bland and seemed kind of seemed to have the same expression on her face throughout the film of just, you know, <laughs> what's going on? You know, <laughs> <laughs> she was processing. It's a lot yeah. to take in. It's a lot to take in at Silent Hill. Yeah. There's, there's no, there's no like proper freak out moment that, you know, where, you know, there's a scene where she kind of finds the witch type person on the road and it just appears like, you know, that it's just kind of a, a normal situation. <laughs> like yeah, she's yeah. talking to a normal person, like, this is really weird. <laughs> I would be freaking out right now. What's going on? She tries to give her two dollars yeah. like she's a homeless lady. Here, <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not amazing for me from her, sorry. But yeah, this is definitely the Lori cohen show for me i think i bought rada mitchell more in in final girl mode than i did as sharon's mother oh yeah yeah definitely the the motherly bits where she's i'm concerned about my daughter those were a little less believable but when she's shaking and she's got the lighter and she's got to go through the nurses i i bought her her yeah performance. That was cool. i was there with her for sure on that yeah, I like. I definitely liked her better in those moments. I think it's a better physical performance than a yeah than like a typical actor performance. Mm. So acting score for me, mm, this is difficult because for me, uh, Rita Mitchell definitely brings the score down. But I, I mean, like the physical performance of you know the 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 ghost nurses that was really cool. Sean Bean. Yeah, again, he's like just trying his heart out and is just basically <laughs> saying with his acting, I want more scenes. <laughs> um, so I'll go like oh, 7.5, I think. Mm. Yeah, I think it's fair. <laughs> yeah, I think with the powerhouse of Lori Holden, Alice Creek, and I'm going to give it to Rhonda Mitchell for the physical performance, as you said, yeah. the nurses and our buddy Pyramid Head. I think there's a lot of good stuff i notice i have not commented on sharon's performance i don't like to make fun of kid actors Uh, and i if i can't say anything (laughs) nice i won't say anything at all i'm sorry sharon i have nothing nice to say but Mm -hmm. alice krieg laurie holden rada mitchell the nurses i'm gonna give it an eight flat eight on the acting because i do think there are enough powerhouse performances to sort of off offset and sean bean is awesome like you said he he doesn't get enough to do but for me what in what little screen time he has He's Sean Bean. He's a compelling actor. You're like, yeah, man. Okay. I believe you. Your daughter's missing. You want to find out what's <laughs> <Yeah>. up? Yeah. <laughs> it's more Bean. Uh... <laughs> Mr. Bean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not that one. Yeah. No, not that one. Come on. This is our film. <laughs> right. Let's add up the scores then for Silent Hill. Silent Hill gets 43.6. And where does that? <laughs> I was like, are these going to be the lowest rated movies of this season of film versus film? Maybe. Qu- quite possibly. <laughs> um, quite possibly. <laughs> uh, definitely not in the top 10, that's for sure. All right. <laughs> that's it for part one. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out part two to see who wins. 
But don't stop there. Get involved and tell me what your favorite films are relating to the episode. Send us a DM or comment on Instagram and TikTok at Film vs. Film Podcast. For X at FVF underscore podcast. Plus, we are now on YouTube. So hit that like button and comment there. If you do, I'll give you a shout out on the next episode. Remember, please leave us a five star review and subscribe. Pod signing off. Thank you.